We've come to Santa Monica, California, and we are standing right in front of the amazing Pacific Ocean. And Sophia has joined us. Hi, Sophia. Hi. And of course, Lainey Brown. Hello. Hey, Lainey. And I am going to break the Modpo fourth wall by shooting <laughs> some B-roll video of Chris and Zach. They're not going to be happy, but I'm doing it now. <laughs> Chris and Zach. And for those watching this video, they are now going to see, cut in, the video I'm making of Chris and Zach. Do you guys want to at least nod your heads? There they are. <laughs> They've come with us. We're here to talk about a poem by Will Alexander, who was born in this city. The poem is not specifically about the beach or the Pacific Ocean, but it has a ton of resonance with it. And uh, Will was born in 1948 in L.A., went to UCLA, and he is much influenced by Bob Kaufman and Philip Lamantia, so we think of those as affiliated with the Beats, but he's got all kinds of other influences, surrealists, and sort of his own cosmology. Lainey, do you want to add anything else about Will that we should know before we look at this poem? Well, I would say jazz, and specifically John Coltrane, um, this new book, Divine Blue Light, is written for John Coltrane. And the Divine Blue Light, published maybe by City Lights? Yes. Is that possible? So another beat connection, mm -hmm. sort of. Mm -hmm. Published in 2022. Yes, brand new. So as we're filming this in 2023, it's, it's new. So we found a poem, you found a poem. And how would you like to read it? And then the three of us will talk about it. Great. Okay. This is inner palpability. Implied by inner palpability as transpersonal dictation, all works composed as a musical arc, as if rowing in an isthmus of lightning. The threat through rising vapor currents, hissing with disillusion, this being none other than internal cartography, ghostly cipher as interiority by number. Again, ghostly flares and ciphers as if the arc from lunar suns had risen. Therefore, suns appearing above suns, ignoted via the blue fragmentation that is grace. We're gonna play a little close reading game. I'm gonna to toss out a phrase. <laughs> and will you, and I'll do the same, respond to it one at a time so sophia transpersonal dictation okay. what an interesting idea right? it is interesting um what do you make of that well, I, well because transpersonal being like uh consciousness beyond the limits of like a personal identity and right. then dictation with that it makes me think of like this um collective unconscious that ties more to mm -hmm. like the state of being human rather than like your personal experience mm -hmm. of humanity mm. makes me feel like a cosmic sort of just like undercurrent you use the word cosmic you mm -hmm. use the word undercurrent <laughs> i mean oceanic might be another word for what will is getting at so while he wasn't thinking about the ocean we came here because there was something about this poem that made us think of that oceanic more than one feeling. All right, uh, internal cartography kind of follows from that. Yeah, well I was just thinking about how the the ocean amplifies the sky to connect to what Sophia was saying. It makes it even more visible. So mm. internal mm. cartography is invisible, right? It's, it's not outside. You mean it's like the Dickinsonian idea of a geography in her head? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Personal. Do, do you believe it? Lainey Brown, you per, cause you have a lot, you, you're, you like cosmologies. I do. And so this is really t speaking to you personally. So you believe in the idea of an internal cartography. And it's connected to the vaster sense of self, mm -hmm. like Sophia was just saying. Can we add, before we turn back to Sophia, mm -hmm. I'm so glad I'm not doing this to myself. <laughs> cause this is, these are hard poems, yeah. right? I mean. Yeah. Unless you let go. So I want to add the tone of none other than internal cartography. Lainey, what do you make of this? Lo he loads it up. None other than. Well, right before that, it's disillusion. Mm -hmm. Hissing with disillusion. And that's not disillusion, but dissolution. Like Dissolving. breaking apart. So you said letting go. Or yeah. let, 
to let go of a kind of only cerebral understanding. Yeah. And I think that's what the disillusion is referring to, mm -hmm. which is again the same thing that Sophia was saying about going beyond individual sense of identity. So how, Sophia, how wrong-headed of us, I'm, that's on quotes because nothing <laughs> we do is wrong-headed, but how wrong-headed of us to come to a cartographical, mapped, symbolic location, simply symbolic location, the ocean, we all came from it, you know, um, to talk about a poem like this with its sense of the lunar suns rising, suns appearing above suns, and the blue fragmentation, which made us think immediately of this absolutely stunning, stunning winter in Los Angeles blue that you don't yeah. get a lot of the rest of the year. How wrong-headed of us to think we have to come here for it. Clearly, Will is saying something else. Say whatever you think he's saying about this. Well, I don't know if it, I, <laughs> I don't know if it's so wrong to. I feel like part of this part of this poem is. <laughs> Will was not thinking of this police helicopter. No, yeah. I think part of this poem is asking us to consider the world based on how, like, the frequencies of it, like, the particles of it as a unit of meaning instead of, like, having words being the only unit of meaning that we have available to us. Yes. And I feel like coming to a place where, like, you feel better being in your body and being, at, like, I think that makes sense to discuss right. a poem like this. Sure. You're as defending us beautifully. Yeah. <laughs> um, ghostly fares, flares, and ciphers as if the arc from lunar suns. I mean, lunar suns? Wow, this is really a strange surrealistic cosmology. Take it away, Lainey. Ghostly fair, flares and ciphers, as if. Ghostly flares and ciphers as if the arc from lunar suns had risen. I feel like there's a connection between arc ARC in the stanza and arc mm -hmm. in the first stanza mm -hmm. ARK. So we have a kind of a sacred arc, maybe. And then we have a, an arc that's a shape that could be lunar or solar or mm -hmm. sinuous as mm -hmm. waves. So it's, it's creating a circle with this mm -hmm. question of what's ghostly and what's a cipher is also somehow spiral or circular. And here I was a minute ago, gently mocking us for thinking we can come to a location, a LA location, and think that we could get resonances from this poem, but we do, because the last three lines make me think of penumbra, the kind of penumbra we are seeing. I'm looking with my not so great eyeglasses at the sun, and I get flares, ghostly flares, mm. as if it were an arc of a lunar sun and suns appearing above suns, I can actually see that, igniting the blue. And of course, the blue of the Earth's atmosphere is only caused by the light from the sun causing us to see it with our eyes. So this is a very particular thing. I don't know if there's a question in there, but I'll just leave that hanging and let you guys respond. Well, that after image or mm -hmm. doubling of image, I'm connecting to resonance and music, mm -hmm. the vibration that stays, the body is changed by and hearing he's a music. a pianist and someone, an accomplished pianist, as I understand it, and someone who cares a lot about music. And sees no separation necessarily between music and poetry, solar and lunar, yeah. all that. Oh. All works composed as a musical art. Yeah. We are getting there, so let's yeah. do the works composed. Okay. So when we get dictation and compose, as in composition, mm -hmm. keyword, and works, those three things are metapoetic. They suggest that this work, that all works, composed as, okay, I guess I want to ask you how that as works, <laughs> because there's an as if, so it's a double likening. So, Sophia, all works composed as this poem was, as the music you might be hearing, that actually has some kind of connection to the penumbra I'm seeing in the sun, uh -huh. composed as a musical arc, A-R-K. Mm -hmm. Do something with that, and then well, Lainey will do something with that. So I guess the as, all works composed as a musical arc, it would be pushing against 
the idea of uh, a poetry that is about something. He's not writing about what it means to like view something beautiful. He's writing, he's composing something and processing something on the page. It's an act. It's an action. It's not about something. So it's definitely not. A, he's not an aboutness no. kind of poet. I don't mm-hmm. think so. So we better riff on what Ark might refer to. I think you said something a while. You said it has a religious and pre- ecclesiastical connotation. It could. Yeah. That's where the sacred texts are. Right. Another Ark. Well, in music and in astronomy and in mathematics and in mythology, which is throughout all of his work, yes. all of these sources. And what, what is the arc there? Um, beyond duality, um, beyond exclusivity. Mm-hmm. So he's not choosing, I'm a poet of only this and not that. Mm-hmm. Or I, he's trying to be inclusive in that word cosmic. I mm-hmm. want to say it again. So, if we add the third sense of arc, which may or may not apply here, the arc of the thing that one builds to set out in the water to either redeem or rescue Mm -hmm. all beings on the earth, Mm -hmm. as in Noah's arc, Mm -hmm. you've got the rising vapor currents. A musical arc set off as if rowing. So it really does refer to the arc as in Noah as well. Mm -hmm. So I'll read the first couple of lines again through rising vapor currents. And I would love for both of you to try to push hard on this idea of the arc as a sacred saving, as a sacred place for redeeming, as a rowing in an isthmus of Lightning, that sounds dangerous, Mm -hmm. something to escape from, and the threat through that penumbra. Okay, here goes Sophia first. Implied (laughs) inner palpability as transpersonal dictation, all works, presumably this one too, composed as a musical arc as if rowing in an isthmus of lightning, the threat through rising vapor currents. Okay. It's so hard. <laughs> it is the hard. Police it's, helicopter it's a, will give you a second. It's a difficult to think. grammar. There's so many it's things to stack. Right? And I think it Let the police decide <laughs> this and then we'll try again. Hi guys. I feel like there's this My bad. Can you cut that okay? Can Paul cut that okay? Yeah, because I was Sorry. So let's you're you're basically left to try to figure out those first four lines. Okay. You can start anytime. I feel like there's um like a uh, an inversion of scale here where this inner palpability, this suggestion of like an internal cartography that is equally important to the external landscape of where we exist being an isthmus of lightning, which is like fraught and frenetic and chaotic and vivid. Like it's making me question like how big are the parts of ourselves we can only feel? And what if we explore that as like a, a, what if that's a place of exploration equally important to like this vastness that we already live within? I, that's kind of like (laughs) where I'm getting with this stanza. So you're defining palpability that doesn't actually mean a physiological or physical thisness mm-hmm. reality. Mm-hmm. It's real, but mm-hmm. not. Well, we know I can it's punch real, it. but we can't touch it. It's inner. Yeah. And it's implied. Yeah. Wow. Okay, Lainey. <laughs> isthmus of lightning. I want to go right to the isthmus of lightning. So we are rowing in the isthmus of lightning. So I just want to pause. You can't on row that. in an isthmus. So that think, would be right? impossible, Isn't right? That so land? an isthmus land. is a spit of land. How are you going to row in the isthmus? Composed of lightning. So what I want to suggest is that the musical arc is the key to our survival and thriving 
with the sacred texts. The sacred texts are kept in the ark, mm. and that's music, and that's poetry, and that's many other na- things we could compose s- as that. We are that, yet it's also that's why it allows us to can, to move to row through oh, an isthmus okay. of lightning. So as could it be arguing? Rowing is like arguing with, like opposing. Does that make sense? I think you're pushing it, but <laughs> why not? <laughs> Why not? The first as yeah. is as if this were the form. Works are composed in the manner of mm-hmm. deriving from the ark. Mm-hmm. That sacredness, that the sacred texts are maybe hidden from us, maybe too powerful for us to comprehend, but we compose works because because we're beings Mm -hmm. and naturally we compose works in that mode of sacredness and that leaves us finally with the I want to say faux conclusory therefore not faux but you know (laughs) like when you hear therefore you think oh we're going to get a conclusion right Mm -hmm. something clear from therefore to the word grace and it resonates with the title of the book, Divine Blue Light. So I'll read the last two lines and I'll give you each the final word on this last part. And we've got to get to grace because it's a, it's a matter of a certain kind of belief. Therefore, suns appearing above suns, ignited via the blue fragmentation, that is grace. Who wants to go first? I have a final thought. Okay, go. This is a quote that Phil wrote in the preface to the book. Compared to reality... Phil... Will. Will. Will Alexander's preface. Will wrote. Did I say Phil? You said Phil. I made a rhyme. Okay. Compared... Pink, Phil Will. Should I start over? A reference to a game that we play at Modpo headquarters. (laughs) He writes... Compared to reality as three-dimensional, noun-based organization, these poems are less concerned with the palpable plane. Mm -hmm. Nice. Less than most people would, Mm -hmm. or something like that. Can you read that again? Yes. Compared to reality as three-dimensional, noun-based organization, these poems are less concerned with the palpable plane. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Sophia. Um, I guess it it makes me think of, like, this intermingling of, like, magical, surreal, scientific language, which all deal in planes that aren't super palpable. Like, scientific language is full of words that describe phenomena that we know to be true, but we can't see. Mm. And I feel like this is kind of venturing into that space as well, just through a more mystical, like, it's interchangeable with, like, the Mm. science and the mysticism. Um, mm. And blue fragmentation makes me think of a jazz influence as well mm. because blue is so, pro- like, kind of blue, mm. Miles Davis, like, it's everywhere in that. Mm. For my final thought, I want to think about Bob Kaufman in relation to Will, Will Alexander. There is a connection because Will reveres the poetry of Bob Kaufman. So a big difference between the two. Kaufman's words are monosyllabic. They are what might be called... Um, basic or building blocks they are as interested in access to spiritual and emotional states as will is but they're ultimately influenced by what a terse perception written in words can get you and will alexander uses and kaufman's influenced by surrealism Mm -hmm. but will alexander goes all in on surrealism as the, I I think he would argue, the only way for poetry to give us access to spirituality or spiritual um, exactitude, (laughs) right? I mean, that penumbra I'm describing as I'm looking at the sun, you guys aren't seeing it, but I am. It's, that's real. It's penumbra, it's imprecise, it's hazy, it's an arc but it is no less real. And I think that what Will Alexander has achieved is 
using the poetry of surrealism and words you wouldn't expect mm -hmm. and phrases like transpersonal dictation, mm -hmm. not a phrase that Bob Kaufman would use, to get access to spiritual and emotional states beyond those that we could possibly experience through normal language, through conventional language. Thank you both. This was great. And Thank what a you. great poem.